continuing our all in series part five and the subtopic this morning is worshiping with everything withholding nothing have you ever just gave God everything I'm talking about till you just drop you know that, that was old song uh, Shirley Caesar did talking about old John shouting John and Shirley talked to him, I said, John went to this old dignified church with, made up of dignified folk and, and say, but every time the service gets started, they say, John, he, 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 he think about what God did and he just, he disrupted the place. He just, yo, Lord, thank you, God. And, and to the point to where, you know, you know the deacons, you know, you know how the deacons was. <laughs> Deacon pulled John to the side and said, John, you can't do that. Not up in here. Not in this dignified church. And they kept bothering John, so John just stopped going. John, John just, so now John stopped going. Now they want to go out there and find out why you're not coming to church, John. So they drive up on John's property. John got a long driveway. He got all the kind of acres that you got to pull up on. I would like to believe that the acres was plush. I would like to believe that when you came up, it was something to see. And they drove up the long driveway, and then they, they got there, and they was talking to John. And, and John gave his explanation for why he hadn't been to church. Now, I can't do, I can't give him what's due to him in your church. So since I can't do that in your church, because I don't know how to shut it down. I don't know how to make apologies for it. I, I, all I know that every time I get in your church, my mind goes, I begin to think on the goodness of my God. I, I begin to think about all that he's done. I begin to, in my imagination, I'm walking on my land, and I, I realize, I remember the time when I was hungry, and I didn't have nothing. I, re, I remember when, when, when nobody knew my name. I remember when... It didn't seem like there was going things was going to work out for me, and I, and I just, I just, I just get excited. I, I feel a need to, 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 to lift my hands. I, I feel a need to, to run. I feel a need to shout. I, I feel a need. So, so I decided, brethren, that if I can't give God praise in your spot, John just happened to have an old mule with him. John say, hold, y'all know the story, <laughs> while I give God praise, we need people that are bolder than what we have been in letting the world know that God has been good. So in how do we do that? We worship him. We praise him. We become unapologetic about our relationship with him. So today, I, I, in a, this brief moment that I have, because you all have stolen my time, I, I'm going to hit a couple of key things for you. Jeremiah, the 29th chapter, 11 through the 13th verse, from the New Living Translation, it, it says, for I know the plans that I have for you. Well, part of the plans that you and I were created to worship him, just in case you didn't know, not to give all your time to the man on the job. You were created to give God praise. He desires your praise. It don't make him no more God than what he is, but he created you to. And he wanted a family. He, he just, he, he wanted you, and says the Lord. They are plans for good and not for disaster. His plans for you is not for you to walk around with your heart broken, depressed, and messed all up. His plans is for good things to happen in your life. 
Sometime if you learn how to worship him, how to lift your hands and your voices, you will pull in things that you desire into your world. Why? Because it's like your kids, they walk up to you and begin to tell you how wonderful you are as a parent. Well, you know you start uh, looking for your wallet. You start feeling back there trying to sell, going in your purse. You can get, baby, what do you want? But what if I do God like that? What if, what if I wake up every day with a praise on my mouth? Well, I wake up and I adore him. I, I tell him how awesome he is. Not that he don't know, but it's just good. See, something your children say to you or your spouses say to you, it don't catch you off guard. You know that this, this is true, but it's good to hear it. Yes, good to, oh, dear Lord, do you really mean that? Yes, you are wonderful, Mom, or you are wonderful, Dad. And, and, and then they soften in the ground because you can come right back around and ask for whatever you want to ask for, and I got you. I got you. Verse 12 said, in those days when you pray, I will listen. See, see when, when you understand that God, your arrival didn't catch God off guard, when, when, when you come into alignment with God's plan and how he does things, then guess what? Now you're going to be talking to him. See, there's no way you're going to worship him and you don't communicate with him. So I'm going to communicate with you. See, what I'm going to do before I ask you anything, I'm going to come before your presence and I'm going to adore you. I'm going to, to, to let you know how awesome you are, how much I appreciate everything that you do. And, and, and then we're going to have a conversation. Then I'm going to ask this God, is there anything that I can assist with on this, and on this journey that I'm on? Today has brought me new time, another fresh 24 hours. What do you need from that 24 that I do? See, I'm, I'm, I'm going to make sure he's good and then on the back side of it, at the end of my list, I'm going to talk to him about the things that are concerning to me. <laughs> Verse 13, if you look for me wholeheartedly, not, not, not every now and then, not when you get in trouble, not after you've exhausted your entire day. If you will look for me with your whole heart, that means give everything else the crumbs. Stop giving God the crumbs and look for him. Give him your whole heart and whatever's left, you can have. So you will find me if you look for me with your whole heart. God expects us to be all in. See, he's, he can't, he's not your backup plan. Even in your, even in your mind, if he's your backup plan, he's not. He'll either sit at the top or he'll not sit at all. I would never get the best of what God has to offer until I give God my best. God has wonderful things in store for you, but if you don't decide if you're going to give him your whole heart, you can't get him. We must have a passion for God's presence. The reason why I worship is because I always want to invite him. Have you ever been in a situation where you know God showed up? <laughs> I, I, I'm not talking about in church. I'm talking about in your private life. See, sometimes we want to do all that we do in this kind of environment. Oh, you get private with him. He shows up, and then it's just you and him. And he begins to, oh, Lord, look at here. Oh, it's, you're talking about a sweet moment. Because, see, worship is a form of love expressed towards God. I, I worship him because I love him. I, I worship him because, see, I, can't nobody tell your story like you. You know he's been good to you. You know you are undeserving of the breath that you're breathing right now, but he's been good. So today we will explore the rich Hebrew words that the Bible uses to describe different facets of worship. Halil, Yada, Barat, Zamar, Shabbat, Tauda, Tahila. Each of these terms reveals a unique way to express our praise and adoration, showing us how to engage fully with God. So the first one we're going to talk about briefly is Halil, enthusiastic and joyful praise. The, the definition of it is say Halil is the Hebrew word for often translated as praise in the Bible. It involves an enthusiastic and joyful expression of admiration and gratitude towards God. It means to rave, boast, celebrate, and be clamor clamorously foolish. <laughs> clamorously. What does that look like? That means I don't care. That means that I'm going to give him woo, right here in the midst. See, see, there are times you got to understand, see, your, 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 your worship, your praise, it's geared towards God. It's me acknowledging that he's awesome, that he's wonderful, that, that, that he's everything to me. And, and I do that 
simply because I do value him. See, many times we, we, we think that if you're not careful, depending on where you come from, you think that that make you spiritual. I'll make you spiritual. That's your reasonable service. That's my reasonable service unto God. And I've seen some stuff where that we call praise and worship. I, I, I remember being in this church, and my God, they, 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 one of the brothers, he just go over there, and, and, and he just stand in front of the wall, and he just jump up and holler, woo, woo. Well, if, now understand, if that's how you express your whatever to God, I'm cool with it. I'm not cool with it if we're doing this, and then you get up and you go in that corner, woo! No, 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 because worship and praises, you control that. You ain't just that anointed. My God, I ain't never been that anointed. I ain't never walked in a place, and I was that anointed where I just took over the place. No, I, uh, uh no, you're going to get put out. Psalm, the 148th chapter, 13th verse or stanza. It says, let them praise the name of the Lord, for his name alone is exalted. His glory is above the earth and heaven. Let them, let who? Let the Christians praise the Lord. Amen. There's one thing to say, if, if, if you don't praise me, say the rocks will cry out. You hold your praise if you want to. God will not be denied praise. He, he, he going to get it one way or another. So I encourage you to voluntarily give him praise. I encourage you to not be so cool and sophisticated to where you can't hold your hands up, to where you, 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 you don't weep in his presence. You won't bow down. I, I'm telling you that, that you're talking about Mr. Creator. You're talking about the one that hung the, the moon and swung the stars in the sky and told the ocean to stop right here. You're talking about the one that did whatever it is he did to make oxygen. And uh, Oh, God, and he's not worthy. He's the one to tell your heart, don't you miss a beat. Just yeah. Yeah, yeah. Or when you get cut, it mobilizes an army to repair it and, and don't charge you nothing for it. Ain't that? How do you process? How does the mind really work? How does, what, where did that come from? And you tell me he's not worthy of you. I'm, I'm, the second one is yada, public acknowledgement. Yada means to acknowledge God in public, often involving the physical act of raising or extending arms as a gesture of praise and surrender. I, I lift my hands. I, I raise my hands as an act of surrender, saying, God, you can have it all. I do it in a public place. Why? Because I don't care who's looking at me. I ain't trying to be cool. I need help. I'm a mess and I need you to come in. So, so I, I'm going to, my, my gesture means that I have, I understand I haven't figured it out. It, it says that God, here am I. And if you can use anything, you can use me. I give you permission to use me. Second Samuel 6 chapter 20 through the 22nd verse from the New King James Version. It reads, says, then David returned to bless his household. And Michal, the daughter of Saul, came out to meet David and, and said, and, oh, this is interesting. How glorious was the king of Israel today? This is sarcasm, y'all. Uh -huh. Uncovering himself today in the eyes of the maids of his servants as one of the base fellows shamelessly uncovers himself. So he go, he, he go David, David, 21st verse. Said, so David said to Michal, it was before the Lord. He, now what he's doing, he's about to clap back. So David said to Michal, it was before the Lord who chose me instead of your father, your daddy. <laughs> and all his house to appoint me ruler over the people of the Lord, over Israel. Therefore, I will play music before the Lord. Now, before we go to the 22nd, David here, the, the, David danced out of his duds, y'all. He danced out of his clothes for you young people don't understand what duds is. He, he had an, uh, 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 a special kind of praise. See, 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 what, what, which one did he have? 
undignified. He, he wasn't trying to be a part of the high society. He thought about what God had done. He thought about God snatched down one and promoted him over him. Yeah, yeah. So, so verse 22 says, and I will be even more undignified. He said, David said, you ain't seen nothing yet. You think I act the fool. I'm about to turn it up. See, some of you, if you'd have got that, well, baby, sweetheart, darling, I, I do understand that I was a little out of character, and, and I understand that my position warns that I should act better. David say, forget that. God has been good to me. He's been so good, just in case you forgot. I'm the joker, replace your daddy. <laughs> Verse 22. And I will be even more undignified than this. And I will be humble in my own sight. I, I'm not going to see me as all of that because I'm the king or because I have doctor behind my name or because I have several degrees or because I have a fat bank account or because I live in a big house where I drive a Rolls Royce. I'm going to be humble because I understand with all of those things, they don't mean nothing when I stand before Mr. Creator. They don't mean nothing. But as the maidservant of whom you have spoken, by them I will be held in honor. You don't understand. Praise look good. See, you think it's going to take away from me. But when the people who God created see me giving God praise, that ain't going to take away. That's going to entice them jokers. You're going to respect me even more. Why? Because I understand that there's one greater than I that you should be focusing on, not me. Yada encourages believers to openly declare their faith and praise God in front of others. This can be seen in corporate worship settings where raising hands in praise becomes a visible sign of surrender and acknowledgement of God's presence. It calls for a boldness in publicly proclaiming one's faith and gratitude. You got to be bold in this thing. See, when you know you got problems, when you know you need God, you don't care about the person on your left or your right thing. You don't care what they say. Because, see, I ain't trying to impress you because you weren't there when they put that big foreclosure sign on my house. You weren't, you, you weren't there when Pastor Norm was cooking those doggone leg quarters. She barbecued them. She boiled them. She baked them. And the big bag of rice, that, the Mahatma rice, that she had a, a big bag of rice, you know. And I understand. I love rice, but, uh, okay, enough is enough. And, and, and every can good that you could get, you know. I, you weren't there when that was happening. You weren't there when I was hiding my cars. And you weren't there when I couldn't get a job. And you think I care about what you. Father, I thank you. Glory to God. You've been good to me. Yeah, you've been good to me. I ain't got time. Yeah, no, no, no. You weren't there when he rescued me. When I felt like I was going to lose my mind, he showed up. So I'll give him what's due. I, I am unapologetic of my relationship with him. And then we have Barak, blessing by bowing. I understand you got on your new duds. I understand your Sunday go to meetings. But I also understand, I remember a time when I told you about I had to take what we call the do-rag. You know, the thing that put the waves in your head. Don't judge me. I had enough to make you seasick if you looked up there. But the, your life brings on a change. So I had my do-rag. I don't know if that's that really that funny, though. I'll, just, to be, just to be clear, you know, I don't know whether you're laughing with me or at me. But it, come on now. Come on now. <laughs> but I told you the story about how we, I, I took the, 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 and for some of you that might not be of the African-American race, that's a rag that you put around your hair when you want to press your hair down, when you put hair grease in your head and it make it look like you got those little ruffles in your head. That's all that is. I, I understand because we are a multicultural church. And so I got to make sure that I'm clear on things, you know, because I, I have stories, they are geared more from my African-American experience, and some of my other brothers and sisters be looking like, what are they talking about? 
And because we family, some of them come ask and say, Pastor Bill, what does that mean? You know, so, so, so we doing better because we are one family, multicultural. So, and when it's your time to stand up here and minister, I need for you to explain some of your little colloquials too. <laughs> I don't know how I got real Bill. Ooh, it just got hot all of a sudden, Lord. It just got hot. Just hot. <laughs> Barak, blessing by bowing. The definition of Barak, Barak is a Hebrew term that means to bless by kneeling or bowing, demonstrating reference, humility, and adoration before God. When was the last time you kneeled before the king? I bow before the king. I bow. Why? I'm taking the lowest place. I'm letting him know. See, see, a lot of times you see two lions fight, and, 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 and the one lion just get tired and realize that this battle is over. You know what that joke could do? He, yeah. That means you good, we good. You are the dog. You the top dog right now. See, so when I go before God, you know what I'm saying? I'm saying, Lord, there's no comparisons. There's nothing. There, there, there's nothing in creation that, that compares to you. There's no other God. There's nothing out there that we can use to take and say that it's equivalent to you. That's nothing. So I bow. I bow taking, uh, this is my humble approach. Say, oh God, oh God. Why? Because Psalm, the 95th chapter or book, six stanza or verse says, Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker. Let me understand that there's nothing better than him. The best place I could be is kneeling before him. All my answers, all my protection, all the things that I desire is right here in front of you. And, oh, I love you for it, God. Worship through a rock involves a physical demonstration of humility and reference towards God. By kneeling or bowing, believers express their deep respect and adoration. When was the last time you stopped being so busy and you dropped to your knees and you said, Father, I thank you so much. Father, I thank you for this new day that you've given me. Not a day that I've earned or deserved, but you saw fit when the devil was plotting. When death was trying to sneak into my world, you saw fit to protect me. And then number four, Zamar, making music to God. This is, this is geared toward the, 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 the musicians. We ain't, just, we ain't just playing stuff. You see, I say we. I don't play nothing. Yeah. Zamar refers to making music to God with stringed instruments using musical talents to offer praise and create harmonious expressions of worship. It's, it's that thing to where Psalm, the 33rd book or chapter, third verse says, sing to him a new song, play skillfully. That disqualifies me right there. Play skillfully with a shout of joy. It, 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 see, it, it ain't, don't, don't give him anything. That, that, that means when you come, place, minister unto the Lord. See, it's not about the people when musicians do it. See, if, if a musician understands that it's ministry, that musician is going to be, yeah, taking us on a journey, but they'll also understand that I have an audience with one. It's my job to show up prepared. It's my job to live the Christian life. It's my job to where when I'm in there doing what I do, but also when I'm outside of them, when I'm living my day-to-day -day life, my, my, my life still should represent a sweet melody unto the people. Why? Because I'm here all around the clock, and I'll never disappoint. I'll never show up and not be prepared. I'll always understand that somebody's lives are hanging in the balance of what I do. I'll understand that it's my job to not be only skillful, but to learn how to minister how to open the heavens and allow God to rain down. Because when that happened, there have been times when we experience certain things. You've been in a service where all of a sudden it's like time stops and the music fills the room and, 
and heaven is pleased and heaven shows up and rests in the place. And, and there are times when the minister don't have to preach. Why? Because the anointed shows up. The Holy Spirit shows up. And he removed burdens and destroyed yokes. He set the captive free. He, he restores sight to the blind. He, 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 he heals whatever needs to be healed. He restores peace where there's chaos and confusion. He, he lets you know that it's going to be all right. And number five is Shabbat. Shabbat, loud praise. Shabbat means to address God in a loud tone. Some, see, see there, they, they, so don't, don't, don't be frowning at people when they're loud. Shabbat says, I praise him loud. It means I address God in a loud tone or to a shout, reflecting an exuberant and bold declaration of praise unto him. Glory to God. Praise you, Jesus. Don't hate on me because sometimes I'm louder than you. Y'all, you don't know my story. Glory be to God. Oh, he's so good. See, if you knew my story, you'll understand my shout. If you knew when the devil tried to steal my voice, if you knew when I didn't have a doggone voice, you'd understand that I can't afford to be silent. See, you may not have ever had the wind knocked out of you. You may not have cried until there were no more tears that would fall. You may not have been broken the way you thought you wouldn't recover. So when you hear me or when you see that person and they look like they're out or they look like they're a little strange, don't you hate on them. Stay in your lane because you don't know their story. Sometimes my shout is equivalent to what, my, what pain I went through. I shout. And I have permission. That's a form of worship. The 63rd chapter of Psalm, 3rd through the 4th verse says, Because your loving kindness is better than life, my lips shall praise you. Thus I will bless you while I live. I will lift up my hands in your name. I'll praise you while I, while I have breath. I'll still give you praise. See, I don't know about you. You may not have ever been in a situation where you didn't have nobody but God. At least that's what it felt like. And you knew if he didn't show up, it's over. And you are trying to silence me? I can't be silenced. I can't be embarrassed. I can't dumb me down. You were not there when we were believing for a child for six years. Number six, Tada, lifting hands in adoration. Tada involves lifting hands in adoration and thanksgiving, symbolizing praise, gratitude, and trust in God's provision and promises. I lift my hands as a way of surrendering, but I also lift my hands knowing that he's already done it. I lift my hands in expectation that what I've asked God for, he's already done it. Not going to do it. He, he gave it to me when I asked. He, he, he granted me the petition of my heart when, when, when I asked him. And because of that, <laughs> I receive, Lord. See, it's more than just surrendering. I lift my hands as an act of surrender, but I also lift my hands as an act of surrendering and receiving all that I believe in God for. And the last one is Tehillah. Exuberant singing. That's what Pastor Leo do exuberant singing. Tahila is the act of exuberant singing, expressing praise and joy through songs that celebrates God's goodness 
I just don't understand. Lord, I don't understand these people because if I ain't no better, I think they act like I can't care real no. But I forgive them. <laughs> Tehila is the act of exuberant singing, expressing praise and joy through songs that celebrate God's goodness and works with a vibrant and enthusiastic spirit. The 34th chapter of Psalm, first stanza, first verse, I will bless the Lord at all times. So you see, it's not about my skill level. I choose to bless the Lord at all times. Father, I thank you. I, I, I'm not singing to Pastor Norma right now. I, I'm singing to you, Lord. Let it be a sweet sound, because when I sing to her, I put a little Luther on, and, and you know. Yeah. Look at that. Some of y'all are so spiritual. <laughs> I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. Will you bless him at all times? Will your praise, his praise, be continually in your mouth? Well, as we wrap it up, <laughs> stand to your feet. Because I believe when you teach a message like this, you give people an opportunity to lift their hands. So as we wrap up uh, the, the exploration of worship, I hope you will feel inspire, inspired and equipped to embrace worship in its fullest term. See, the, 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 the message is there's a place of worship for you regardless of who you are and how you're wired. You don't have to do it like everybody else. If you're quiet and you're more conserved, that's okay. If you're loud, that's okay. But just make sure that you understand what worship looks like concerning you and you live your life worshiping. Mr. Creator. Because we've learned about the vibrant expressions of Halil, the public acknowledgement of Yada, the reverent bowing of Barak, the musical offerings of Zomar, the triumphant shouts of Shabbat, the, th the thankful hands of Toda, and the exuberant singing of Tehillah. Why are those things important? Because, see, there are, I'm going to give you five benefits that worship will bring into your life. There, there's a peace that comes with worship. See, when I get before the Lord, there, everything that's trying to taunt me and handle me and depress me, it can't follow me into that space. Then, then, then I, my worship also invites the presence of God on the scene. And, and then there, it changes my perspective. It, it changes me from worrying about whether or not I'm going to win or whether or not God's going to show up to let me know that God is already there. And then, and then it, it causes me to refocus my purpose. I, I understand that I'm winning. I'm not trying to bring victory. Victory is already mine. And finally, because I brought life back into alignment, it renews my passion. So, so, so now what I want you to do, I want you to lift your hands. I, I want the praise team to come back up here. I, I want you to take and bring us back into the presence of the Lord as we close this service. Thank you, Jesus. I will bless the Lord.
song just said the reason why we bless his name is because he has done great things. And I need for you to remember that he, our God has done wonderful things. And we're not, in us worshiping him and giving him praise, we're not giving something that he doesn't deserve. Live a life of worship. Live a life of praising him. Live a life of showing that you are grateful for everything that God has done. Give God a big round of applause. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now with all heads bowed and all eyes closed, if you've never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I need you to do something for me. I need for you to first of all understand that you don't have to be perfect. You don't have to be one of those people that, that think you got to fix it. What you need to do is partner with God, and you do that by giving the Lord Jesus your life. So if you're one of those people that have never made Jesus Christ the Lord of your life, I need for you to repeat after me and mean what you are about to say. And that will cause you to be in right standing with God. So if everyone would please repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your love and your kindness. Thank you, Jesus, for paying the price for me. And I choose this day to confess with my mouth and believe in my heart that Jesus, you are the Son of God and that you were raised from the dead. Thank you, Jesus, for saving me. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you. In Jesus' name, amen. And then there's another group out there of you that maybe at some time or another you did give Jesus your life, but you know you haven't been living the Christian life the way that you should, and you need to rededicate your life. Well, if that's you, first of all, God is not upset with you. He's not mad, but you do need to make it right. So what I need for you to do is just repeat after me and mean it. And everyone would please repeat after me. Say, Father God, in the name of Jesus, thank you, Father, for your love for me. I choose this day to repent of every sin that I've committed. Thank you, Father, for forgiving me, and I rededicate my life back unto you. And from this day forward, I'm going to live my life serving you in Jesus' name. Amen. Give the Lord a big round of applause. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Well, if you're one of those people that gave your life to the Lord for the very first time, or if you rededicated your life unto the Lord today, we do have a gift for you. But first of all, I want to say congratulations. Heaven is having a party. We celebrate you here at Love Alive Church. And we say welcome to the family of God. And we do have a, a little gift for you. But for, before we give you that gift, I need for you to do something for me. I need for you to text the word CHOICE to 904-977-2507. Text the word CHOICE to 904-977-2507. That's if you gave your life to Jesus for the very first time today or if you rededicated your life. We have a little gift that we want to give to you. If you're in the building, you can see one of our ushers or greeters after service, and they will be glad to give you this little pamphlet that says yes. It will explain some things concerning the decision that you made today. If you're viewing online and you made a decision for, for the Lord today, yes, we will send you this here because you text the word choice. We'll send you an electronic copy of this. Once again, congratulations. Thank you.